Welcome to the general orientation and training for Discovery Place, Discovery Place Kids and Charlotte Nature Museum. But today we're emphasizing three things that really, three threads that cross all of our facilities and are critical to all of our team um, to know and understand very thoroughly. And that is our mission, our, our attention to customer service, and the um, importance of being safe. Safety for yourself as well as for our um, guests. So at this point I'd like to ask our staff, volunteers that are helping us with with the orientation today to come forward and introduce them. An opportunity to work with Mary and Leslie, who is on my team, so they put up with me every day. Why don't we welcome all of you and let you know that we're so excited that you are here and thank you for giving of yourselves to really kind of pull you. We want you to really enjoy this experience and hopefully, or I know, that you will gain a lot from it as well. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, the first thing I want to do is go over our mission, and you can follow along with me as I read our uh, mission statement. Uh, we exist to ignite wonder as a preeminent science education center providing extraordinary experiences that engage people in the active exploration of science and nature. That's a lot of words there, but uh, in other words, um, here at Discovery Place, we work real hard, and that's Discovery Place, Discovery Place Kids, and Charlotte Nature Museum. We work very hard to be a first-class science education center, and our goal is to spark or ignite um, the uh, curiosity in our visitors um, by providing extraordinary and interactive experiences um, that relate to science and nature. And this is, our, this is what we do every day when we open our doors. And you will see this mission throughout all the facilities. We've got this posted because we, want, we do want to remind everyone every day that this is our mission and that is what we're here for. Okay, now, um, Discovery Place is a nonprofit organization and we have a long history here in Charlotte. Um, the uh, in Charlotte Nature Museum opened its doors about 60 years ago, a long time ago, um, in 1951, and uh, we're, we're real proud that Charlotte Nature Museum got us started, and then from that group, the Discovery Place, this site here, which opened its doors about 30 years ago, it's a long time, maybe, maybe longer than some of you have even been alive, uh, but uh, opened its doors back in 1981, and I think most of you should already know that we just went through a major renovation last June. We finished that renovation, a $31.5 million renovation, so we had a huge facelift. And then our newest facility is Discovery Place Kids up in Huntersville, which opened up just last October. We're real proud to announce that we just had our 100,000th visitor just this week. So that is in about six months. That is phenomenal. Um, and uh, we have uh, over half a million people that go through our doors each, each year. So that's, that's a whole lot of people, and those people are from all over the United States and even outside of the United States. So we're, we're real proud to show them what we have. We're real proud that you're going to help us show what we have. Now, um, in our harassment policy, it's very simple. We do not tolerate any forms of harassment here at Discovery Place. And harassment can come in many different forms. And you can see them all listed up there, race, religion, color, gender, age, national origin, uh, disability, marital status, veteran status. Yeah. So we don't, we don't tolerate any of that. So I, I need wear. We call ID wear what we, what we wear. Our, you, you may want to call it as uniforms. I don't like that term, but we call it ID wear. So um, you will be issued, uh, if you have not already completed a, stuff, a form out front uh, to give us your size, you need to do so before you leave today. Um, you will be issued us uh, one shirt at your site. Um, we're not going to issue those today as well. We've got to place our order. Um, and uh, you'll be issued a shirt and then a name tag also, which needs to be visibly worn at all times. Um, you're gonna, most of you are going to be on your feet an awful lot, so make sure that you always wear some comfortable shoes. 
Don't come in in the ones that are all raggedy and dirty and you know they've got you know mud and stuff on them. So make sure they're clean and neat. Um, black or khaki pants uh, at all times, and just be sure you know everything's neat and, and clean. And also, you know, we we do not want uh, any real extremes in fashion. Uh, you know. A lot of piercings all over and um, purple hair and things like that. So we need to make sure that we are, um, you know, neat and conservative um, at, at all times. If you've got any question about anything, make sure you ask your area volunteer coordinator. <coughs> Parking. We, the, for those of you that work, will be volunteering here at this location. Um, you will need to get your parking ticket validated each time you're here. Make sure to do that at the admission desk. If you're at Shaw Nature Museum or Discovery Place Kids, that's not an issue. And. Um, um, we do have specific drop-off and pick-up locations, so make sure that uh, you, uh, you do find that at your particular location if you volunteer in that. Um, we take uh, safety very serious. It's a major concern here, so you will learn your safety procedures down in your on-site trainings. So that is something that we do take very serious. Uh, we want to make sure everybody here, volunteers, employees, and visitors are all, um, you know, using the, the the safest procedures that they can and that we, we do look out for them. And uh, you do, as a, a volunteer here, you will receive some perks and benefits. Um, the, uh, and we have a listing of them here, I'm just run through real, real quick, cultivation of community relationships. I can tell you one thing, if you, um, tell, somebody asks you where you work or where you volunteer and you tell them that you're at Discovery Place, their face is all automatically going to immediately just light up and they go, wow, that's a cool place. So, you know, you, we want to cultivate that. Um, networking, professional development. We have a lot of community leaders that come through here. So, you know, your advantage is you get to meet some of those people. Um, and an opportunity to enrich lives of others and the benefits to touch uh, lives is priceless. And it, it, uh, you can't put into words um, how you feel when you actually inspire someone and they, they brighten up and they, they learn something. You just can't, can't even put into words how that would make you feel. Um, those of you that are going to be here at the Community Cafe, we are at Discovery Place here, we do get a 20% discount in the Community Cafe, which is our restaurant. Um, have a, a, a delicious line of healthy food choices. Um, and you will get a 20% discount in Shop Science. Just tell them you're a volunteer. So if you've got to buy a birthday present or a Christmas anniversary or whatever, make sure to check us out first because that 20% discount comes in very handy. And all of our um, employees and volunteers are eligible to join the credit union. If you are interested in, in uh, finding out more information about that, you can either see myself, Irvin, or Mary, and we can put you in touch with those folks. But uh, there's some nice little perks with the credit union as well. And then once you've worked 70 hours, you will be eligible for a uh, free family museum membership. And I believe that's a $100 value, right? Yeah. So 70 hours, so we can um, run that through Mary when that time. Okay, I think that's it. My next slide is blank. So I'm turning this over to Bert. Well, probably to Mary. Uh, one of the other things we wanted to also mention for you is that we also have other experience or other opportunities for you to develop yourselves. And all of us as well, Mary has put together great field experiences, which are trips um, that volunteers and staff will be eligible for. I know that um, I'm going to go to the mountains because I'm dying to go across the swinging bridge. I vow to scream like a girl, but it's okay. I want to have the time of my life. And, uh, <laughs> and um, you will also find that Neri also does a great job with the cafes. So in the evening, we have all kinds of cafes. So we also want to let you know that there will be many, many opportunities for you to grow professionally as well. So I also want to lift that up. And uh, Neri's doing a great job and we have a lot of great team to help support in that, okay? Great, thank you. Thanks. And now for some entertainment. This is the highlight. Pay no attention to what's going on back here. Please look away. It'll spoil the surprise. All right, again, I'm Karen McCall from the Charlotte Nature Museum. Um, we deal with lots of native animals, and we have a brilliant neighborhood. So we have, on any given day, at any given hour, people show up with animals that they want identified or that are hurt, and um, they bring them to us thinking that we can take them in and rehabilitate them or put them on exhibit. Um, but it provides an opportunity for us to share our mission, uh, which is 
obviously igniting wonder, but also the Nature Museum, we want to connect people with the natural world and for them to get an understanding of what animals, what wildlife we'll find in their backyard and why it's important that we kind of let them be. So I'm going to pose this myself at the building and Doug's going to help me out by acting as one of the neighborhood people that is bringing an animal in for identification. Hi, I'm oh, sorry, wait, right here. What can I do for you? My name's Karen. I'm the coordinator here. Can I help you out? Oh, Karen, I found this thing, and I, I don't know if it might be poisonous or what, so I just brought it to you because that's what I'm going to add my yard. Okay, well, let's take a look and see what it is. Um, I got, it's all right. It's all right. I'm used to handling these things. I'm going to pull it out, but I promise it'll be safe, so you don't have to worry about it, and we'll see what you have here. Where did you find this? Well, it was a... Uh, uh, I, was, I, was, I was getting ready to cut the grass, and I, I, I moved one of our benches, uh -huh. and it screwed right up on the bench. <laughs> well, it's, you it's have, nice stuff, but it's, it's well, you know that's what they do, um, but it's nothing to worry about. This is actually a corn snake, which you find out here in the wild. I corn in the house! <laughs> they are called corn, but they're called a corn snake for the pattern that they have on their bellies. But they usually they can be found in cornfields because they like to eat the animals that eat the corn, like mice and um, squirrels and our wonderful rodents like that that could bring damage to your house or disease. So even though you're scared of this, if you also look at the size of it and you think about it being down on the ground, when it curls up and, and arches up like that, it's trying to make itself look as, as big as it can to scare you away because it's petrified because you're looking like a giant to it. But it's not, it's not hard, it's a harmless, it won't hurt you. But if you look at the bottom, it's got that pattern that looks like Indian corn that you would hang on your door in the fall. But it's all right, I'm not gonna let you, um, you know, let it bother you. So you can see it's crawling around my neck, it's smelling with its tongue. Like I said, it helps keep those mice and rat populations out of your house so that your house stays clean and safe. So it's actually very beneficial to have in your yard and you don't have to worry about it hurting you. Do I have to have them in my yard or do you keep them? Um, it's great if you can put them back where you found them because <laughs> it's okay. See, he's friendly. He's not doing anything to harm me. He won't harm you either. But like I said, if you take him out of his environment, he might not do so well somewhere else. So it's best if you could go let him out in your yard and just let him be where he was. Would you like to feel him? Flat fingers right down the scales. <laughs> See, that's really not so bad, is it? No, not so bad. You think you can take him back and, and put him where you found him? Yeah. And I'm glad you brought him to us and that he's all in one piece. And um, anytime you have something that you find that you have questions about, you're welcome to call us and we'll be glad to answer your questions. I have a busted radiator. Uh huh. <laughs> Actually, I can, but um, what I do is bring it to the mechanic first. <laughs> Um, we are going to um, do a lost child, lost parent. This is what we see very, very, very often at Discovery Place Kids. Um, so I'm going to act as myself, and we have somebody that's going to act as a parent who has lost their child, and we'll have a child who is lost. Oh my god! Oh, Okay, ma'am, calm down. Can you tell me what he looks like? He's, he's a boy, and uh, he's got blue jeans on. Okay. And, where, where was he last seen? In the museum! Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, okay, no. freeze. <laughs> okay, at this point. He's blue eyes. He's just a little boy. He's just little. He's missing me. Okay, can you tell me how old he is? Oh, so we can find him? Okay, he's 11. <laughs> he's got blue jeans. <laughs> And he's last off somewhere in the museum. Okay, we're gonna call our staff and we'll get everybody on it, okay? We promise. At this point, what we do, I don't have a walkie talkie, but we would notify all of our staff to tell them that there's a missing child, so that's what I'm going to do. So, 
Attention all staff, attention all staff. We have a code missing blue. He is 11, he has blonde hair, blue eyes, he's wearing blue jeans, and he was last seen somewhere in the museum. <laughs> Ma'am, can you, can you come with me so maybe we could maybe spot your son somewhere in the museum? Okay. Let's see where we can find him. Were you, were you, were you, was he playing with you and then you just went missing? Well, I was on the phone, but I was watching him. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he always stays by me, and he would never leave. Someone took him. <gasps> Honey, baby, there you go. <laughs> Family has been reunited, and we did it in less than eight minutes. Wow. <laughs> so we, uh, we do a lot of experiments here. And uh, in our labs and on the floor, we, we work with... Uh, some extraordinary items and things that you will be exposed to. I'm going to show you a couple of those right now. Here we are at the stage. The stage doesn't actually move. And this, <laughs> this is liquid nitrogen. And I'm going to show you a couple of experiments with liquid nitrogen. Alright, well 
while he's getting that set up, I want you all to also notice I have on long pants and closed toe shoes, because if we spill this stuff on the floor, you'll lose a toe. All right? So, Fred, do some experience. You want to see why those gloves wouldn't work? Yes, please. Okay. So we're going to show you guys why the gloves would not work. This glove. Yes. All right. Ready? Yeah. All right. Let's go. Do not. No. Wait. Tongs. Never stick your hands in liquid nitrogen. It's not the best decision. All right. There you go. Hold that for ten seconds. Can you count ten? Okay, let's pull it up. You ready to see why it would okay. Ooh. Ooh. So if that were my hand. <laughs> Mom, Dad, yeah. I was working at Discovery Place today. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do that. Alright? And actually, um, do you have anything else to do? Do I have anything else? Yeah. I mean, as long as we're set up, there shouldn't be too right, Well, you know, you shouldn't put too much in liquid nitrogen, but I have something fun that we can put in there. All right. Does anyone have a kitten? A kitten. <laughs> All right, so there are living creatures in the building. Please do not attempt to put them in the nitrogen. All right. Or anyone's lost child. Okay. So, of course, that one time we found the lost child in liquid There was one time we found one in liquid a scandal. It was, yeah, not good. You want to put that in there? Sure. All right. With the, so make sure you get the tongs to push it down in there. Okay. There you go. There you go. Something that I'm going to push 
for you to do is to grow in the way that you build relationships with the kids and as well in the way that you start to um, basically become a presenter and an instructor as well as just an aid and a help within the camp. So thank you for being here. I just wanted to say hi. I look forward to talking to you guys a little bit more about this later. Thanks. Hi. We have birthday parties every weekend here at Discovery Place, at Discovery Place Kids, and at Charlotte Nature Museum. Um, we have a lot of them, 10 up at DPK, which is Discovery Place Kids. We have five just about every weekend here at Discovery Place, and we always need help. So if you're ever around on a Saturday or Sunday, and you want to come and have a really great time, um, let us know, because we would really love to have your help on a weekend, too, as well as a weekday. Um, usually you'd have to work the whole day, it'd be 9 to 5 on Saturday, 12 to 5 on Sunday. But um, what you're doing is helping out with the birthdays, helping to, if you like little kids at all, it's really fun. It's usually cake involved, and um, you know, it's just one of the things we do where you combine a science and a lot of fun. So if you ever want to do that, uh, think birthdays. Thanks, so What we're going to do now is we're going to break up into groups. We have eight groups, and um, I'm going to ask you to call out your numbers so you'll know which group you're going to um, to go to. And we'll start right here with John. One. And my name is Manu Khandelwal, and um, here I'm your tour guide. And I'll take you to different stations at Dis Discovery Place, and it will just give you a summary of what Discovery Place is all about. Here's 
usually uh, when little little tiny kids come in, like the little babies that the parents have to hold and they want to touch the animals, I usually uh, give them the horseshoe crab to touch first. But he's kind of built like a tank and it is uh, actually pretty difficult to harm as long as he's right side up. But the sea urchin and the sea star are the ones that we got to watch out for because they're little tiny too. Sometimes I'll pick them up for people if they'll let me. Like this guy's not even going to let me. He's holding on so tight and I don't want to rip off any of his feet. So if there's no resistance, we can pick them up. But they have their mouth is underneath, and their little tiny feet are underneath as well. In fact, several hundred of those. And they move around using those little feet. But you guys are welcome to feel these guys if you like to. And take a look around the lab for as much time as you have left. I'm not sure. So now we are going in our backyard. We'll see how do we take care of these animals. Please feel free to ask any question. We'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Okay, well, if you guys don't have any questions, I'm going to send you on your way to your next station. And I hope to see some of you now. We use them at Discovery Place Kids to tell stories to the children. Um, we relay different messages right now. The science message, we're doing the five senses, so our show is called the circus. So basically, we've got a bunch of circus animals putting out a show so we think about the five senses. Um, we also take the time to teach the kids about etiquette, how to watch a show politely. So beforehand, we go out on our stage, and the center of the plays kids get a pretty big stage. So basically, we use puppets to tell different stories. Um, the next puppet show for us is a cultural story coming up, so we're going to teach the students about the African folk tale and puppetry. Um, these puppets that I'm using right now, they are so they're using these as a good way for parents and children to have a dialogue about maybe some of the heavier issues that that um, shows people. It's brings to life. So they can talk to them. There's also different stories in here that they can act out with the children. Um, 
Thank you very much. Okay, so this was our puppet show. And here at Discovery Place, we try to engage public with uh, such humorous ways. So can you just tell us a little bit about what is infrared radiation or what is thermal imaging? Infrared radiation is actually, it's the same as light. It's an electromagnetic radiation, only it's on a longer wavelength, so we can't see it. Yes. And does our body uh, radiate infrared? Yes. Okay. All right, come on over. Yeah, you can step in front of this infrared camera and check it out. A thermal camera, actually. Okay, see your name? What color is it? Good guess. Orange. Get closer. Yellow. Yes. And? White. And white. Now, can you guys transfer heat? Uh, got it. Can you guys transfer heat on your body? Yeah. Okay, right, thank you, Heather. Okay, so let's head on to our next station. Here we saw some, some of the signs. Now we'll go to our lab where we'll see how do we do and how do we play with the signs. Hi, Tim. Hey, Manu, how's it going? Very well. Oh, bring everyone in. Bring them all in. Hey, guys. Hey. A big group. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Welcome to our Explore More Stuff Lab. Uh, this is actually Manu's second home. Manu lives in here most of the time and uh, helps out with all the different activities we do in here. This lab is chemistry and physics based. Uh, basically, we set up a set of activities, six different activities each month. Those activities are on a theme. So the theme right now is electricity and magnetism. Um, Manu actually built this piece right here, which shows electromagnetic induction. And what we do is we try and set up pieces that allow our visitors to experiment. So we want that to be open. We want them to be able to come in and go, hey, I want to know about this. I want to try something. And we give them a lot of equipment and, and kind of restrict what they can do. But at the same time, it opens up what they, you know, what they want to learn. It opens up a way for them to learn about stuff. So here, we've got this tube. Drop a magnet through it. And we can actually see the voltage on there. And then we've got these lights set up here. And you can see them flash and you know these produce power. So it's like, OK, I produce power. When I do that. What happens if I angle this a different way? So it goes through a different speed. How does that affect the amount of power I produce? So it allows them to basically experiment with what we have out here. Um, the space, like I said, is always changing. Every month, something new. Last month, we had music. Next month, motorsports. 
month after that, we're going to do, I think it's energy. So we've got all kinds of stuff changing. Back here we have our own little workshop and then all of our own basic equipment that we need. Yeah, the theremin actually got this one. This is fun. You guys can play with this one. This, since everything's on electricity and magnetism, this is an instrument that works with the uh, kinetic field. And your hands become capacitors that will interfere with our electromagnetic field. And you have to play music with this thing. This controls so, the board So now, which one is the volume and which one's the pitch? You'll get to figure that out while you're playing around with it. Which one's the volume, which one's the pitch? Ah. Kind of cool, huh? <laughs> That's loud. <laughs> Like I was saying in the skit, we um, get a lot of people that bring animals to us, but then we also use a lot of animals in our programming. So we would actually have a situation like I have right here with you all, where we'll have an animal out. Um, we do that here at Discovery Place as well. Discovery Place is the only place that they don't have any live animals. But we always want to make sure we practice safety, but we also have the opportunity to help educate our audience so that they're, especially with snakes, less afraid of them and have a better understanding. Um, and you also want to remember customer service and answer questions, have eye contact, but also if the if person is nervous about an animal, you will know it and you want to respect that as well too, but yet still try to educate them so they're not as afraid as they start out. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is your safety and the animal safety. So we always do a nice semicircle, so you've got about a three foot buffer between the audience and the animal. And then you also want to, um, if you're going to take the animal out, have the cage facing you. So when you open it, it's opening towards you and not out towards your audience. And for your safety, you also want to decide when you're ready to take that animal out and then just go and do it. If you ever hesitate and jerk, that scares the animal and puts them on the defensive because they know something's going to happen. And then it might not hurt you, but you're going to have a lot tougher time getting that animal out of the cage if that's what you're trying to do. So. Um, with our snakes, like I said, I, I would open it towards me. I always tell my audience when you do that, take the snake out. And then you just pick it up very gently. Um, these guys, most of the animals that we use in a demonstration like this are very mellow because they've been handled a lot, so you don't really have an issue where they're going to go crazy. There are some that are a little spastic, which make you kind of nervous, but same thing. Just make sure that you're comfortable with the animal you're going to use and that also, um, like I said, you decide when you're going to go get it so that you have the minimal amount of difficulties getting it out of the exhibit. And then any time we hold them, you don't have to put much force on them. They won't really lightly, and they usually just kind of hang out at work. If it's cold in the room and you pull them out with cold-blooded animals and they get near your body, it helps them warm up. So they might start moving around more than they did when you first take them out. The same thing, just kind of let them go with the flow. But you also want to protect yourself too. I don't ever let snakes wrap around my neck. You know, sometimes these guys will go up around, but you don't ever want them to do a full loop because they are constrictors. If something happens and they get scared, that's the reaction. Also, you have a problem here on the French and that. Um, and then we always, and with the snakes, we usually let the audience touch the snake. That's not going to always be the case with all the snakes or with some of our other animals. But anytime we do that, um, always hold the animal out, the snakes out straight so that you can tell what direction the scales are running. You always want to go down the direction the scales are running when you pet them. If you go the other way, it will the scales are down to the skin underneath. And then that's a really difficult thing to do. And this happens too, especially with corn snakes. Um, but it's difficult to feel the skin and the scale gets pulled up. And then we also tell the audience that we don't want to touch the head area and usually ask them why. Usually they know oh, it might bite you. If they, they snakes can't get away and they get scared by something and you have it in their face, you're opening up the possibility of getting bit. Um, so we always tell the audience flat fingers, you go down the direction the scales run and away. Uh, all animals, all these reptiles can carry salmonella, which can make you really sick. Uh, these guys can get up to be a long time, but that doesn't make them totally immune to it. They are pretty to know there's times where you should always wash your hands after, but I know there's times that I haven't and I haven't gotten sick from them. So it's uh, usually the same thing, but you always do want to wash your hands after you handle an animal. And really before you do too, to make sure, like if I had been handling a mouse and I didn't wash my hands and I go to get a snake, one, I can carry bacteria that could go on the snake, and two, I have a smell like a mouse. 
And if he's hungry, they're not the smartest things in the world. They know smell, but they're not, they don't have great eyesight. And if they smell a mouse on my hand and they're hungry, they might bite my hand. You know, hurt yourself. So anyway, you're welcome to come if you want to. When I do this, I stay where I am and let the audience come to me because you will have people that really don't want to get near it. But hopefully they will watch so they see that it's not as big of a you know, problem as they originally thought. You guys got any questions? All right, thank you. Thank you very you much. Back. You came back very gently too. All right, thanks. Sure. Uh, thank you. And, uh, so here at Discovery Place, uh, while you are volunteering your efforts and time, you are not just doing some public service. You are actually having a lifetime learning experience. And uh, when I joined here last November, it didn't take long to realize that uh, I was working with some of the most intelligent, intellectual, and humorous people. And so I'll just say, when you are working here, just keep yourself open and let the new experiences enthrall you. So, I know some of you guys are returning volunteers, so you already know what this means, but people that don't, this is our reaction. So, um, this area back here is all about innovation, so this is basically about innovation and music. So, all of these pieces uh, do something. They either make a sound or they alter the sound. So, this is very slow broken. So, uh, we will always have these out here. Um, I will give you a few tips about when you are working in this area, if you are going to be working in this area. People will often try and use these pieces as air hockey clubs. Um, that is not allowed. So, this piece, and it's not the only one, you can see it gets very high pitched. If you're back here and this thing is turned up loud enough, that hurts your ear. And you can see I have just for a minute and it's already irritating. So, if you do come back here and you hear that just going for a while, or even if it's not going for a while, and you think it might need to be changed, just walk over and see if anybody's over here. If somebody's over here, you can ask them to maybe kind of turn it down a little bit. Um, if there's nobody over here, just take the pieces off. Um, so, you can do that. But um, if you guys have not played with this, or even if you have, you want to get a chance to kind of play with it a little bit, I'm not going to too in depth because you guys are kind of going through, but you guys can have a chance to play with it real quick. And, uh, see what it does. So I'll step back and you guys can kind of jump in. All right? We look forward to welcome you soon. For more information regarding mandatory on-site training, Please follow the links. Thank you for joining us at the virtual orientation.